Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today, a bit of a simple one for you. Um, most people probably know how to do this already, but just for those getting started in Photoshop, this is a really commonly uh, requested tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to select and change a certain color range within after uh, within Photoshop, not After Effects, sorry. You can tell what I've been doing recently. Um, and you can see here, we just have a hue saturation adjustment layer. And if I turn this on and off, you can see the original image was uh, red and this new one is like a turquoise green. Um, now you could, if you wanted to do it the slow way, um, go inside an image like this, grab your pen tool, create a path around it, uh, and then change the color within that path. But you'd be here forever. And that is not what you want to do. Instead, you can do it much easier using select color range. So that is what we're going to do this time around. So I'll just delete what I've done so far and we'll start from scratch. First thing is you need an image where you want to change the color. It helps if it's bold, um, but sometimes if you don't have that case, this will work on any technique that you care to try. First thing you need to do is go up to select and then color range. Pretty self-explanatory so far. This will drop you. You can see that I've already got the perfect setup here. Uh, this will drop you into the color range dialog box. Um, and there's a number of options you can choose. It will be on sampled colors. And what that means is you sample the color you wish to change and it will select every instance of that color. OK, you can, however, choose reds, yellows, greens and so on. You can even try skin tones. Won't work well for this image because there's no skin in it. We're going to choose sampled colors and the fuzziness tool is basically how tolerant it is towards other colors and blending those other colors. So like when you have a selection within um, Photoshop using the magic wand, there's like that tolerance. This fuzziness is the same as that. The other thing you need to uh, understand is the selection preview. Now, this doesn't change anything. It just literally shows you uh, you can pick the best way for you to understand what it is you're matting out. So you can either select uh, a black mat, which basically means every color apart from the ones you selected um, display as black. You can choose white map, which is the opposite, or you can choose quick mask, or you can choose grayscale. I like grayscale the most. Sometimes I choose black mat instead, um, but we'll stick with grayscale for now. Okay, you have three options here eyedropper, additional eyedropper, and remove eyedropper. Essentially, you want to choose your first um, color with your eyedropper, so we know the umbrella is red, like so, and that'll do a pretty good job. You can adjust the fuzziness. And you can see already we're starting to get there. But if we push the fuzziness too far, we tend to get all sorts in the background that we don't want. So let's push that fuzziness down until we get something we're happy with. And then let's just select that shirt. And you can see that initially it completely changes it because you selected a completely different color. So if you go back to the original sort of color there, um, like so, Bam, you can see it selects all of the reds. So if I were to then add an additional one um, by dropping back to none, you can see that um, some of the reds here aren't entirely selected. It would brighten up because it would select all the reds of the background. If I were then to remove that, we'd get something more similar to what we want. Now you can see, for example, that it started to select some of the white shirt as well. Now I'm going to leave that in and I'm going to tell you why when I hit OK. Now, what this will do when we create our new layer is you can see that on this white shirt, we're getting some red reflected from the light. Um, so there is actually technically red there. If we weren't to have that selected and we change the color of the umbrella, it would be odd because you'd have red light reflected on a sh shirt um, through a different colored umbrella. Uh, and I'll illustrate that now by adding a hue saturation adjustment layer. So go down to new adjustment layer and choose hue slash saturation. OK, now what that will do with your marching ants or your select box, whatever you want to call it selected, it will create a mask from that selection. So it's very important that you don't deselect that. OK, now if I were to just crank this hue around, you can see that we're pretty much there already. OK, so maybe this time we'll choose a nice light blue instead. But you can also see that within the folds of the skirt, there's some reds um, still. And on the shirt here, there's some red still. So if you hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and then click your mask, this will give you a preview of the mask shape. And what you can actually do is just touch it up here. So go to your brush tool. You can see that we don't want this bit of sky. Oops, I shall change that to black. Uh, we probably don't want this bit of sky here. Um, we'll touch up those bits around the corner. But what we'll also do 
is we'll see the effect that this has. So if we draw, draw a large white section there and say yes, make it completely visible and then option click our mask again, you can see that we can touch up some of that. However, the black does start to take on that element of green. So that's something to be uh, careful of. So let's mask that again. Make sure that you don't have any odd blobs like there, for example. And then we'll zoom out. So it's starting to look pretty okay, apart from there's a still a bit of red halo around there. So we'll just mask that one back in. I think that needs to be white for there. But you can see that it you kind of get this sort of odd halo effect. Um, so you need to make sure that you're doing it with a light touch. Maybe not f fully white or fully opacity, for example. Um, let's do the same down here along the bottom with a lighter touch brush, just to pick up some of these extra highlights along the edges here. Get rid of a few of those touches of red. Okay. So you can see that I could have spent more time making my um, select mask more accurate, or you can come in and touch it up at the end. It really depends on how you want to work. Um, usually I'd spend more time making it was accurate, making sure it was accurate, but for a beginner's tutorial, that's probably just fine keep coming through here and touching those up like so. So as you can see, fairly simple process, a little bit of tweaking at the end. Of course, I'm doing this with a mouse rather than a graphics tablet, so that doesn't help. There we are, that'll do for now. And you can see that if we hide and show this layer, you can essentially change any color into another one as you want. And of course it is still dynamic because it's an adjustment layer. So you can go through and change that to maybe a yellow maybe a green, maybe a purple, maybe a pink. Doesn't matter. It is up to you. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I would appreciate it. Um, and if you didn't, let me know how I can improve. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.